As a quick introduction to this story, this is an unofficial or official, either way, it could be both technically, a uh, sequel to the story titled Screaming that I wrote and narrated a few months ago. Rando Calrissian, good friend of mine, good friend of the channel, I've done a number of his stories, and he's just a really good guy all around, heard the story and wanted to implement it to some extent into his, uh, his universe of stories that he's created. And I thought it was a great idea. So, super proud of it, super happy with how it turned out, and honestly, it's kind of a cool crossover. So, yeah. Without uh, any more delay, today's story is Screaming Part 2 by Rando Calrissian. The thick, gray fog laid over the town and its buildings. The only thing that could be seen were thousands of fiery red eyes. The eyes all stared back at Kane as he watched through his window. He wasn't sure what these creatures were or what they wanted. All he knew was when someone noticed them, that person started to scream. It almost seemed like every day three new screams were added. Each scream that was added was unique, which was unusual. No two screams were alike. Every single scream was different in both pitch and frequency. All the years that Cain walked this earth, he had never seen anything quite like this creature. What are you? He gently whispered to himself. As he leaned forward in his chair, Cain began to stroke his beard as he noticed the eyes followed his every movement. Hmm. Interesting. Suddenly, a creak in the floorboards resonated from behind him. In a split second, Cain immediately stood up from his chair, turned his body around, and pointed his gun at whatever was behind him. Raven. He said with a hint of disgust in his voice. The man behind him, if you could even call him that, was around 5'11", the same height as Cain. He had deep, rich, purple wings that when rested, looked as if he was wearing a leather coat. His feet were sharp talons. He had human legs, however, they were always covered with black leather. He had long, purplish-black hair, and he always wore sunglasses to hide his inhuman eyes. Hello, Kane, Raven said, as his slightly British accent peeled through his lips. Tell Darman that if he wishes to speak to me, to do so himself, and not send his failed experiments to do it for him. I was not sent here by the Wendigo King. Then what the hell are you doing here? Them. Raven pointed his index finger towards the window, his sharp black nail perfectly pointed to one of the eyes staring back at them. Raven slightly smiled. Beautiful, aren't they? You know these creatures. No, oh, <laughs> barely. Raven chuckled. Enough of your games, Raven. Tell me what they are. Raven walked over to the glass and laid his hand on it. There was silence in the room for a moment, and then Raven opened his mouth to speak. Something different. Something beautiful. As he stared at them more and more, he became more in awe of them. Are you blinded by their majesty? Blinded? Paralyzed? Dumbstruck? After hearing the question, Raven pushed out a sarcastic chuckle through closed lips. <laughs> Quite the opposite, my friend. You admire these creatures? I admire their purpose. Raven turned his gaze from the window to Kane. Kane noticed a tear running down Raven's face. And just what is their purpose? Isn't it obvious? Raven spat as he turned his head back towards the window. To maim, and feed, and kill. As he spoke, saliva dripped from his mouth, as each word seemed more intense than the last. What do you want with these creatures? Kane asked. He slowly approached Raven. Raven rested his hand on the window. He remained silent for a moment as he stared at the creatures in the fog. Raven, 
What do you want with them? Raven pulled his hand from the window and turned back to Kane. To achieve the unachievable, Raven said with tears in his eyes. After hearing this, Kane was dumbfounded. <laughs> you want to kill Darman? Kane proclaimed as he stepped back from Raven. Raven began to laugh. I don't understand what's so funny, Raven. Kane spat. You know as well as I do that he cannot be killed. Raven gritted through his teeth. Exactly. So I'll ask again. What the hell is so goddamned funny? I don't want to kill him. I want to make him suffer. Raven held his hand in front of his face. He looked at his long, sharp, jagged black nails. His inhuman hands leaked a black ooze from his fingertips. Raven then looked down at his wings with disgust. I never chose to be this. I was created to be magnificent. I was created to be beautiful, and now all I am is something older than time. Something more black than death. My purpose was stripped from me by my creator. Do you know what that feels like? To be created for a singular purpose only to have it stolen from you? You are like an artist gone blind, a composer gone deaf, nothing but an empty shell trapped by flesh and blood. Raven fell on his knees and dug his nails into his forehead. Blood poured down his face. A scream accompanied the blood. However, the scream did not belong to Raven. That... that was not me, Raven said in shock. Yeah, no shit, Kane replied, as he tried to pinpoint the noise. It's coming from the room below us, Kane said in a panic. Raven stood back up and wiped the blood from his face. What of it? All these people are screaming. Everyone started screaming within the first four days. This person was able to last six. I want to know why. Floor 3. Apartment J. A man sat on his recliner in front of his window. His eyes were heavy from lack of sleep, and his spirit was defeated. He had tried everything to escape and stop this horrible, loud screaming, but nothing had worked. This is where I'm going to die, the man said to himself as he looked out at the fog. He noticed something. He stood up to look out the window to see eyes, dozens of them, red, fiery eyes that all stared back into his soul. When he saw the monstrosity that the eyes belonged to, all he could do was scream. Suddenly, he was pulled back into reality and pushed back into his chair. What the hell? The man yelled. He looked up to notice Kane and Raven in front of him. Who the hell are you? The man looked back at his door, hoping to see that it was broken down. The door, however, was perfectly intact. The man began to sob, and Raven rolled his eyes, grabbing the man's face. How did a poor, pathetic human like you survive for so long? He asked mockingly as he examined the man. Enough, Raven. Raven let go of the man and stepped back. Am I going to die? The man asked, still sobbing. Raven began to laugh. <laughs> well, not yet. I said enough. Kane yelled. Kane knelt down in front of the man. What happened? Tell us everything. The man recomposed himself. It has been six days. Six long, agonizing days, and that screaming has not stopped, silenced, or ceased. The man took a deep breath and began to tell his story. He told them how he had lived there most of his adult life, and how he was a loner for most of his life, and how the screaming had destroyed the peace and quiet that he had become accustomed to. At this point, Kane stopped him. How long have you lived here? Twenty-five years, the man replied. Impossible. What do you mean impossible? The man asked in frustration. Because 25 years ago, this place didn't exist. Kane yelled. The man became silent. He looked around the room for a moment, 
his skin became pale, and his eyes became heavy. He looked at both of them. His eyes were cold, as if they were dead. Kane got closer to the man's face and stared at him. The man was breathing heavy, as if he was guilty of something. They're after you, Kane softly whispered. I need you to listen to me very carefully. When you looked outside, what did you see? The man began to shake his head. In a soft, trembling voice, he spoke. Too many eyes. Too many cold, dead eyes. What did you see? Raven said, repeating Kane's question. The man looked up at them both. He began to shake his head. No. The man spoke a mixture of laughter and crying. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, this, this, this is not my fault. All I wanted was her. Uh, I, I just, I just wanted her back. Who? Who did you want back? Raven asked calmly. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a monster. It's, it's what she would want. What who would want? Asked Kane. But, but now, now she's watching me with those eyes, those... Oh, those damned eyes. The man shouted as he grabbed Kane by his shirt collar. Kane pushed the man off of him and stood up, and then stepped back. He then looked over to Raven. Would you be so kind as to do the honors? Raven began to laugh and crack his knuckles. <laughs> With pleasure, old friend. Raven stepped towards the man and took off his sunglasses, revealing his eyes. His eyes were bright yellow with a black slit running down the middle. Look into my eyes. Raven's words spoke in the man's mind as the black slit opened to make his eyes pure black. The man became entranced. Raven began to shake and his nose started to bleed. Both Raven and the man were blown back by a blast of energy. Raven slowly got back up and wiped his nose. The man had hit his door with impact that should have knocked the door off the hinges, although there was no damage. The man's neck should have been broken, but he got back up with ease. Kane put his hand on Raven's shoulder. What the hell happened? What did you see? Fragments, images, all chaotic and out of sync. Raven pushed Kane's hand away and walked toward the man. But one thing is certain, everything that is here is because of you. Raven pointed a finger towards the man. And that's what this is all about. So much death and no one to put the blame on. Raven spat. What are you talking about? What I'm talking about, Kane, is that this is all here because of him. Everything goes back to him. These creatures, the screaming, all of it. Then what are they? They? Raven turned his gaze to the window. He began to slightly chuckle. They are the ears. Or Erin. He spun back around to the man who was cowering by the door. And they? Again, Raven began to chuckle. <laughs> well, they are monuments to all of your sins. Then why aren't we affected by the eyes? Raven spun back around to Kane. Because we don't belong here. We're not supposed to be in this story. Raven looked back towards the man. And yet this disgusting, pathetic excuse for a human being expects us to help him. To save him from his own demons. And what say you? Kane asked. Raven turned his head back towards Kane and again began to chuckle. <laughs> Let the games begin. So that was Mr. Calrissian's take on Screaming Part 2. A very interesting style in the sequel. I actually quite enjoy how he wrote that. Uh, love the connection of the stories. 
love the use of ears or earin, however you wish to uh, pronounce that. I believe it's actually earin in the proper vernacular, which is Aramaic. Uh, earin are actually watchers from the books of Enoch. So, interesting take on that. The creatures in Screaming are, for all intents and purposes, ear or earin, however you wish to say that. Um, they are essentially watcher angels, biblical style angels, very terrifying creatures. So, uh, yeah, huge thank you to Rando for writing this sequel. I actually like I said, quite loved it, quite enjoyed it. Very good time. Uh, really connected the stories and the worlds very well. So thank you, Rando, again. And I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, if you did, make sure you go check out Mr. Calrissian's channel. I will link it down in the description below. Great friend of mine, great friend of the channels. Like I said, I've read so many stories of his. Um, Perception of Evil was the first one. Damn good story. Starts with a Star Wars reference. Because, <laughs> of course, it does. Anyways. All right, everybody. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. If you want to support, go to join or patreon.com slash as the Raven Dreams, where for a dollar a month, you can get early access to all of my content. If you want to support the channel further, you can go down and leave me a comment letting me know what your thoughts are. What are you thinking today? How are you feeling today? How's your day going? Let me know. And yeah. Um, okay, I will talk to you all later. And you have a beautiful day. And remember, you're loved, you're valid, you are important. And most importantly, you are the only you that can ever exist, so sleep well.